and I can confirm if I can. Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight for our Village of Alsip committee meeting. Today is January 16th, 2023. We'll call this meeting order at 7.34 p.m. Can you call the roll, please? Trustee Dalzell is absent. Trustee Juarez Mendoza? Here. Trustee McLaughlin? Here. Trustee Murphy? Here. Trustee Navas Barza? Here. Trustee Parada? Here. Mayor Ryan? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, we had kind of an urgent matter that we needed to discuss quickly in, um, in private. It's what we call a closed session. And uh, we need to uh, recess to uh, closed session for just a few minutes for a discussion with our attorney at this time. We'll come right back in the boardroom as soon as we finish up. I need to uh, ask that we go in to discuss collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or the representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2, Chapter 2. Can I get a motion a second to do that, trustees? I'll make that motion. Second. second. Roll call number one to adjourn to closed session. Trustee Delzell is absent. Trustee Juarez Mendoza? Yes. Trustee McLaughlin? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Navas Barza? Yes. <clears throat> Trustee Preda? Yes. Motion carries to adjourn to closed session. Thank you. The time now is 737. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, this is going to be really quick, and we'll come right back into the boardroom as soon as we get done with our meeting. right now. Garage? Mm -hmm. Go sure. Could you be favoring, just kind of get this thing ready to, again, 8 o'clock, but the next site that's going to come out. Okay. Nice. What's that? I don't know. That's your floor upstairs. Okay. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. Holes? What's so those that Those are air pockets. Okay. But this one... There's a big chunk of fucking carpet. Okay, that's what they saw then. Okay. And then that's just air pockets. Are they supposed to get those out? Yeah. Okay. They'll when they go up there tomorrow. They'll punch the they'll hole in the No, hole. they'll sand it. Okay. And then they'll have to fill it in, okay. and then they'll put the next coat that over. That carpet it. must have been what they saw. Well. Because they said it looked like carpet. There was. Where did they take the picture? That's all carpet. Oh, that may have been what they saw. What's where is this going into? This is going into the bullpen. That, no, that storage room. That storage room. Yeah. And then right along this wall in that corner as it comes. Okay. Same thing. Okay. But this one they're gonna have to take out. Okay. Well, I just wanted. Because that is. That's bad. Yeah. I mean, it's a chunk, which is good, so they should just be able to grab that tomorrow and pull it out. But I just wanted to mention it to you because no, I appreciate it. I wanted to make sure that we. That's get what it. I was like. Wait a second! I'm like, yeah, it's a, <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> but the other ones are just air pockets. Okay. I'm like. That may be what they saw too, as they saw a lot of that. Yeah, I mean, you okay. could see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's how you get all the air bubbles. How close are we? Should be up there on Friday, because if this is the second coat, one, two. Today would have been the second coat. Today is coat two. Mm -hmm. So you have Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday Thursday. Thursday. And then the 24 hours we got to wait. 24 right? hours, so we'll probably Monday, just to be on the safe side. Okay. <coughs> so okay. that was the house that I was planning on buying. <laughs> Freaking 
they just sold the house <laughs> for $172,000, and they have a sign of their Dale Property Investments and Redevelopment. Framing carpenter needed. The whole basement needs to be framed out. Mm. I feel like I offered the guy $159,000. Mm. And that was back in February, and it's been sitting and sitting and sitting. Well, this moron just gave him $172,000, and I'm like, you need roof, you need windows, you need cabinets, you mm -hmm. need to frame out. And I mean, framing out the basement isn't really all that. Mm -hmm. But all you have is plumbing down there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't have anything else, and I'm like, no electrical? The electric is present down there. Yeah. But they have to rough everything back oh, in. Oh, wow. Got at least 70 grand. There's no way in hell you're going to get $240,000 for that house. <clears throat> I was like, oh, okay. I think somebody got killed in that one. I'm not sure. I don't know sure. <laughs> I know you <laughs> I can, If I could throw three kids in it, ask me if I care. I know. Um, actually, this is only two bedroom, one bath. But it's not in a bad spot. Okay? Mm hmm. Um, I lived a couple of blocks north of Taylor for three years in a rental house when I first came down. So it's just a little house, but mm. not bad. Well, that's all they need. That's all they need. It's got the basics in it. For seventy grand, I seventy-two thousand. Yeah, <laughs> not too bad. Wouldn't touch that. Twelve one. grand a year. Oh, that's 36 grand. I'm half of it. Mm -hmm. And I can recoup mm -hmm. the other 36 out of it, mm -hmm. even if I lose 36 out of it, mm -hmm. which I wouldn't, but that um, one didn't look too bad. Well, the 90. The 95 no, one? The 92, I think okay, it was. Hold on. This right guy? there. Uh, part of town is not. Okay. No. Yeah, see, I don't know. No. I'm trying to find a map. Uh, there we go. Okay. Okay. So this is um Oh Hershey, okay. No, you don't want to be here. Um Hershey's no good. Hershey's well, bad out of but it's out. Hershey's okay. Hershey's this over here's the airport. Mm -hmm. Over this way. So this is like a back road that people use when Veterans Parkway is tore up. And this is Veterans Parkway right here. Um, this particular area of shootings. Yeah, it definitely. Is. You don't want to do that. Taylor. There, Washington. There's East Taylor down here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I live on Vail. So not too far from me. It's just an older part of town. These houses over here were built in the 60s. These are usually built in the 40s, 30s. You know, they're older houses. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely a, not a bad part of town. It's not awful. But yeah, around Veterans, Par uh, Veterans Parkway, mm -hmm. stay away from. Okay. Anything off Veterans is, is turned into... Gang City. Yeah. There's a bunch of apartments that line veterans. Bad, 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 bad. bad. Anything west? Oh, forget it. See, I lived on Olive. I lived at 201 East Olive. This is 601, so it's just a few blocks down. Not a bad place. It's just, like I said, two blocks north of Taylor. Um, and that's a pretty big house. That's a big house. I could throw a lot of parties in that. You sure could. <laughs> Looks like it needs some work, yeah, though. Needs, oh, shit. It needs some yeah, work. Needs oh, some work. my God. <laughs> and they still want $110,000 for that shit? Oh, my God. Wow. wow. No, okay. Well, we'll move on from there. <laughs> Pain for the it, area. Then it just goes higher. That's a 
huge. Is it like a duplex? Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? Um, five bedroom, two bath, I would think it is. Single family. Looks like it may have been a duplex. Why do you take it all the time? It's not all the time. house that's been converted. Say, it looks like an older home. It's not in bad shape. Though. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> They're not showing you the pretty parts. <laughs> Where's this at? I think this is over by the airport too. Oh, six points. Okay. Not bad. Not bad spot. So, this is Veterans Parkway at the very southern tip. Mm -hmm. So, this is 74 coming in and 55 where they meet here at the bottom part of at the bottom. So, this is not a bad spot. This is not a bad spot at all. There's some really. Oh, shut up. There's some really pricey homes. 449, wow. Yeah, over this way. Real pricey. And big golf course over here. So, this is not a bad spot. So, let's see what this one is. Oh, shit. Big house, four bedroom, two bath. But that's the kind you want for resale, too. Yeah. That's your garage. And yeah, it needs some work. Some hardwood floors. And yeah, it's pretty roughed up uh, there. It don't bother me at all. Shit tore up. No, it's not being recorded. It is. No, it's blinking. I went in and paused it. So, yeah, this looks Are there, but it looks like it's had some. Yeah, it definitely needs some renovation. Yeah. Older cabinets. Yeah. Right. Older ca cabinets and countertops. Yeah. Bathrooms that though, doesn't don't look, look that bad. bad. No. That, see, the carpet's been ripped out, hasn't it? No, it's like a tan colored carpet. Oh, okay. It may be just nasty. No. That one doesn't look too bad. See, that's all I'm doing, just going to put hardwood floors in this yeah, way. Yeah, tear everything it's up. It's easy to frickin' maintain and yeah. or put the luxury VCT in there. And yep. Yeah. That's not a bad spot, but he's a lot further. He's quite a... But he's he can get on 20, the interstate. He can get on the interstate right there. He's at ISU in like 10 minutes. That's 10 minutes, fine. Yeah, because... Is this going through town? He can get on the interstate right here, and ISU's right up here. Super easy. I'm looking at 265 for me. Because that's right by the school, isn't it? It is. Three Let's see the 115. Let's see the 115. Oh, it's on a hill. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Hmm. You would pay 265. If I, if it's that's in a, a decent nice neighborhood. House. That's a very nice house. And yes, spyglass is good. They have a bunch of college kids coming in. Kill them. <laughs> this, I don't care. I'm this a, is very. I'm gonna much, make my money. <laughs> <laughs> this is very much a. Um, yeah, this is a very it's nice. It's a residential home. Yeah, and families and all Oriented. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. be out there more than. Yeah, very nice home. Yeah, I can see him burning that place down in two seconds. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me throw some alcohol on it. You know, let's see if we can get it, spark it up a little bit. That's a very nice little home. It's in good shape. Yeah, new ti newer tile, yeah. newer cabinets. I thought I mean, you were trying to be a cheap, you know, landlord, you know, a slumlord. No, That's I'm not a slumlord. Nice. You, you should know that by now. See the houses <laughs> around it? So, screened in back porch. That's yeah. very nice. Very nice. Great for the, great for the parties.
very nice for the party. If you're going to look in that price range, <laughs> hell, we'll just keep scrolling here for a minute and see what we can get into. I want a return on investment. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Um, That's not bad. At 175, that looks pretty nice. At the Jackson, it goes Olive Jackson Taylor. If I lived in Olive Jackson's in between Taylor, and this is 605 East Jackson, so very close. Very nice. It's in a nice, it's in a nice area. Woodwork is beautiful. Look at the floors. They all down. Yeah. It's a great thing. Beautiful. Somebody flipped it. Yeah. Well, they've been there a long time and just took care of their house. Yeah. Nice cupboard. Those are new. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely updated yeah, everything. Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> First three years they won't after that. <laughs> anyway, just some thoughts. What uh, website did you go on? Mo Movoto. Oh, Movoto. Mo yeah. Okay. I like them better than that. But I'll talk to Chet and I'll talk to Evan. See what we can find. I kicked myself in the ass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over 85,000. Oh. Look at this. Goodness, this is beautiful. Where's this at? Oh, Monet. Oh my God. Beautiful. I was going to buy this mm -hmm. on a short sale for four hundred and eighty five thousand. Wow. Six hours too late. Mm. Because I went and looked at a job with my kid. He goes, goes, What? I go, Me and Papa were gonna move into this house and he goes, Are you serious? I go, yeah, I was going to buy it. Put them in there. Lease out both of it because they own two flats. Lease both of them off and it's right down the street from the house. Walk to rent. Mm -hmm. They could live there. Enjoy it. My I show my mom and she's like, I love it. She loved the walk in shower. Oh, yeah. I was like, Yeah. Me personally, this is what I love though. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. And looking out the back. Yeah. That is plus all of the storage in the back. I was like, this would be perfect. I could just drive around the back, open up the doors, and drive all my dead shit in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, she looked at me and she goes, what were you going to do? I go, $485,000. This guy bought it, and he's trying to sell it for six months. He did time. absolutely nothing to it. Give it I was like the hot water, he had an on-demand hot water heater, which was less than two years Why old. Why do I have to vent that? Gas? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to vent my hot water heater. Right? Because it's gas. Yes. Well, why can't I? Because the vent that I have for my hot water heater is PVC. Down. You can vent it. You just throw PVC up. Or you just have to buy it so that you use the gas fittings for the, a four inch or six inch. You can buy them. I mean, I can I can order an Avion with PVC or. Okay, we'll talk. I'll take pictures. They're telling me William McMaster's, who is my hair guy, I asked him to do a quote on the on the lamp. He wouldn't even do it because he said I don't have it. It's huge work. Oh, it is. Yeah. So, I still want to explore that. Ask Sean. We put one in for Sean. Sean Shaw? I love them. I love them. Um, so let me let me take pictures. 
I'll bring them back and we'll go. Most people, are, are you on well and septic? No, I'm on city water. Sure. City, city everything. Roger, at 8 o'clock, i got next site coming in here. They can, they can wait a little bit, but I just see another one. I'm going to go in this drawer. Oh. All right, thank you for everyone's patience. We'll call this meeting back to order. Time now is, um, let's go with uh, 7.53. Thank you. So uh, we'll go back to our uh, or, uh, matter of business here, too. we got a few people, some attorneys in the audience as well, too. Trustees, uh, we'll try and call some cases up here, and then we'll go to our public forum. Um, first on the, I had a, Speak to a matter with um, JNL and CNC. Um, uh, Machine and gentlemen, you want to come up for a moment, please? So, um, our attorney, Vince Kankar, reminded me to, uh, just earlier that we needed to speak with you, gentlemen. Uh, you had an application in for a 6B renewal. Okay. So what I had on here was the owners of JNL CNC Quality Machining Incorporated. Um, you're located at 12633 South Springfield Avenue. That the um, this property would like to appear obviously today uh, to request the renewal of your Class B uh, tax incentive. Uh, your renewal for the tax bills for 2021 were uh, just reviewed by our attorney Vince Kankar and. Um, Vince felt um, he spoke to you about our um, renewal agreement and so forth on Tuesday. So can you introduce, introduce yourselves, please, who, who we're speaking with? Andrew Zolza, Machine. Okay. Andrew, could you sign in for us, too, just yeah. to let you know you're here today? And then Zach. Uh, I'm okay. And Zach, what firm are you with again, too? Sarnoff and McCash. Sarnoff and McCash. Thank you very much. So as far as the I, – I don't have the full application with me. Uh, Zach or Andrew, if, if you want to speak to it and just uh, tell the board briefly what, what your plans are for um, JNL CNC machining. Yeah, JNL, I mean, uh, Andy can speak to us a little bit too, but uh, they, they've been in the village for years and they're looking to continue to stay and grow. Uh, right now, there's 16 employees and they're looking to add more. Uh, and I'm sure Andy can tell you it is hard. They're CNC, CNC machine shop, and it is hard to find people who can do what they do. And so that's really been the struggle, is finding uh, good people that can, you know, be make things. So uh, that's where he's at, and he's looking to try and improve the property a little bit. Um, and the uh, tax are going to continue to help him do that. Okay. Basically, the other thing is, is you know, we're reinvesting on new equipment every year to be updated, to be competitive and stuff like that. Okay. The older new equipment is, the less competitive we are. So we have to invest a lot of money in our business also. Thanks. Sean, if you could sell closer to that mic, will you? Thanks. Because we actually record these. The, the camera's on us. But, um, Andrew, um, how long have you been in the village? I've been here since 2004. Oh, oh 2004. Okay. 2004, yes, sir. Okay. How's sales right now? Are you doing all right? Sales would be better. It's just the problem we have is trying to find experienced employees. You know, what we do is we deal with real close tolerances. I'm sure you're familiar with Dawson Machine, Kosha's Brothers, and other different machines. Oh yeah, I've been to Kosha's before. Mm -hmm. It's a so you know you know what they're doing, and basically we do more or less the same thing, but on a smaller scale. You know, they deal with thousands and pounds, and and we do it on a hundred, two hundred, three hundred. A thousand, two thousand pound pieces, you know. So it's a little different scale, but that's basically what we do. Also, one of my best friends is in the same industry. He's over in Bridgeview, and same thing, with nuts and bolts and this and that. And he's, he's he makes a lot of parts for Polaris and all these kind of companies yet too. But I totally understand the nature, and you're right. It, the finding machinists, even setup men, are is a difficult task to find and stuff yet we too. We have to have experienced machinists because we do a lot of onesies, twosies, and 
they have to be able to read a drawing, set up, and do their own programming. Okay. Based on our business, you know. Okay. We do not do volume. Okay. Now I'm, and I'm, I'm familiar with your shop here next to. Um, ABC. ABC is supply and so forth, then, too. Okay. Maywood also ABC. And Maywood Industries. Maywood Industries, yes. Okay. Uh, trustees, anybody have any questions for Andrew from CNC Machine? JNL. Okay, well, gentlemen, thank you for coming in there. Introduce yourselves, and, and um, what we'll do is and tonight's just a committee meeting, but certainly we'll put this on our agenda uh, next week. And we have a board meeting. We'll ask the board to approve your request for what you'd like to do and something too. Okay. So fortunately, we've been able to um, at this time, you know, are even with the uh, property taxes generated from your, your building have been sufficient and our attorney feels that we're in, you're in a good position to renew this right now then too. So. Thank you okay. very much. You too. Zach, nice meeting you as well too. Yeah, okay. Have a nice evening. You too all. Thanks Thank folks. You. Next, um, Trustee uh, Juarez Mendoza is um, under planning and zoning licenses. Uh, we have got a party here for your number one if you want to call them up please. Um, I have a discussion of planning and zoning case 20, I'm sorry, number 2022-12-S-1100 for an I-1 industrial to an I-1 industrial special use for truck trailer parking, vehicle repair, hard storage, and office for property located at 4637 West 120th Street, Elsa, Illinois. 60803. The Planning and Zoning Commission held a hearing on December 14, 2022, and voted 5 0 in favor of. Thank you. Oh, thanks, gentlemen, for coming up. So, I, I'm, a little, I'm familiar with the property anyway. Um, so, what you want to do, your business right now, and if you can introduce yourselves, go ahead. So, uh, my name is Nick Fatikas, F T I K A S. I'm the attorney uh, representing Luke on the special use application. Okay. And Luke? Luke Trykov, owner of uh, LDC Logistics. So, Luke, I've seen your business. You're, you're just west of, like, Elite Transmission, right? Is that where you're at on 120th Street? Is that you? No, no. Uh, I'm purchasing this property now. I'm under contract. Okay. So, uh, currently, my business uh, is spread all over. So, I got the, uh, I'm parking my trucks in Le Monde. I got my office in Burridge. And I'm using repair shop here in Blue Island. Okay. So this is going to uh, make my operation to be everything in one place. Okay. So just to give us a quick overview, are you buying that, that property that ends at in, in from? Um, no, not the end. Uh, so basically uh, it's a 12,000 square foot building. Yeah. And next to it, there is like a vacant lot. Uh, I think uh, before uh, there was a building there. Right, just from the, the bus down. company? This is west of Elite Transmission and uh, Neil Brothers. Yeah. And empty lot that the uh, building was taken down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's some trucks sitting out there right now. That's what this is. I see. I had the wrong property. Okay. I was thinking the one next to Elite with part of um, Enterprise Rent a Car. Right. Okay. And we did bring a, a survey and just a site plan. Do you want me? To sure. Can I? Can we see it, please? Thanks. Just don't worry yourself. All right. We're at. So, Luke, I, I, I'm familiar with this now. Then too. So, yeah, there used to be a building stand. The building's gone. There's about 14 trucks sitting out there right now. That's your property. Uh, All right. That's one you want to buy anyway. Gotcha. So, and just to, in, as part of our discussion with um, the building and zoning group. We are not operating there currently. The plan is to purchase the property, do some interior alterations to the building, okay. and then basically reorganize the parking layout. Um, we did, and I want to make sure it's part of the record, um, the Building and Zoning commit Committee has recommended um, organizing our parking spaces vertically mm -hmm. as opposed to horizontally. We had initially come in. Um, with a different layout, and I want to make sure that um, the plan that you're looking at now is what we agreed was a more efficient layout. Um, so that's the plan that we were able to get our, our recommendation of approval. Okay. Make sure share this with the board. And I have some additional copies if, if you oh. Yeah, if you want to share it with both sides here.
Thank you. And what, Luke, what's the intent of the trucks? Are those just being staged for repairs, or what are you doing uh, with the size? Basically, you know, with the current shortage of drivers, some trucks are uh, staying without drivers for a month, so that's why I need the parking lot. I like my office to be there. Currently, I think uh, uh, that building is a flex building, and there is three tenants inside, so I like to make it like one-story building. Okay. Currently, there is like 3,000 square foot, I think, of office space. I like to make it more, you know, to have more office space, less uh, uh, storage and for repair place. And that's it. Too. Look, no running trucks out there, though, right? They're not going to be sitting out there idling or anything mm -hmm. like that. I tell you, because we, every so often there's another restaurant in town. you got one right in the corner there with the Golden Barrier, too. We can't have any idling trucks. That diesel fume, you know, they, they blow right across into those places then, too. So. The fuel costs a lot. Mm -hmm. That, too, you know. <laughs> Um, but you did receive a unanimous decision uh, for recommendation from the plan commission, which is great to hear. Um, trustees, any questions for Luke? No. no? Um, I, you know, that's fine. I like the layout, Luke. You know, like you said, with, with parking everything perpendicular to the street, it's probably the best use, and it's a good size lot. That's 230 by 334. That's a good size lot. Yeah, over. It's over an acre, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So, um, Roger, any, any Roger Early's our building commissioner. Roger, any issues? Anything you think we need to talk about? Sounds good. Okay. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. It doesn't look like we have any questions. And again, I appreciate, um, Scott, the, the layouts that you gave you to. It really explains a lot to the board. Uh, as I mentioned in the last party, we'll put this on the agenda for next week, asking for approval um, on your uh, special use permit. Okay. All right. Thanks much, guys. Um, I'll wait a few minutes on next site. Roger, if you can let them in. Uh, it's the 8 o'clock meeting. We'll get them in a few minutes. We'll get some more people out of the way that are here and stuff in, too. Um, so I'll put my report off here for a minute. We'll go to our clerk's report, Clerk Harding. Thank you, Mayor. I have the presentation of the January 9th, 2023 board meeting minutes, presentation of the December 2022 FOIA report, and presentation of the December 2022 IDOT motor fuel tax allotment in the amount of $74,403.68. And that is all I had, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, we don't need an attorney tonight. We already spoke with him. Uh, the engineer did not have a report this evening. We'll go to a public forum. Did anyone in the audience wish to address the board this evening? Um, la ladies, did you want to talk to the board tonight? No? Okay. Sir? You know, oh, Mr. Mr. Nelson? You know what, sir? Um, yeah, come on. Come on up. We'll, we'll talk about this right now. This way we won't hold you up either. This um, Trustee Juarez Mendoza. Or no, I'm sorry. This is uh, Trustee Prada. Uh, this would be under your report, sir, for the... Uh, that's your floor upstairs. Okay. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. Holes? What's Those that are mean? air pockets. Okay. But this one is a big chunk of fucking carpet. Okay. That's what they saw then. Okay. And then that's just air pockets. Are they supposed to get those out? Yeah. Okay. They'll when they go up there tomorrow. They'll punch the they'll hole in the No, oh. they'll sand it. Okay. And then they'll have to fill it in, okay. and then they'll put the next coat. That over carpet it. must have been what they saw. Well. Because they said it looked like carpet. There was. Where did I take the picture? <coughs> That's all carpet. Oh, that may have been what they saw. What's where is this going into? This is going into the bullpen. That, no, that storage room. That storage room. Yeah. And then right along this wall in that corner as it comes. Okay. Same thing. Okay. But this one they're gonna have to take out. Okay. Well, I just because wanted. Because that is. That's bad. Yeah. 
I mean, it's a chunk, which is good, so they should just be able to grab that tomorrow and pull it out. But I just wanted to mention it to you because no, I appreciate it. I wanted to make sure that we that's get what it. I was like, wait a second, I'm like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> but the other ones are just air pockets. Okay. I'm like, that may be what they saw too, is they saw a lot of that. Yeah, I mean, you okay. could see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's how you get all the air bubbles. How close are we? should be up there on Friday because if this is the second coat one two today would have been the second coat today is coat two mm -hmm. so you have Tuesday, Tuesday Wednesday, Wednesday Thursday. Thursday and then the 24 hours we gotta wait 24 right? hours so we'll probably Monday just to be on the safe side okay. so okay. that was the house that I was planning on buying <laughs> freaking they just sold the house uh -huh. for hundred seventy two thousand dollars okay. and they have a sign up there, Dale Property Investments and Redevelopment. Framing carpenter needed. The whole basement needs to be framed out. Mm. I feel like I offered the guy $159,000. Mm. And that was back in February, and it's been sitting and sitting and sitting. Well, this moron just gave him $172,000, and I'm like, you need roof, you need windows, you need cabinets. You need to frame out, and I mean framing out the basement isn't really all that. Mm -hmm. But all you have is plumbing down there. Mm -hmm. You don't have anything else in the morning. No electrical? The electric is present down there. Yeah. But they have to rub everything back oh, in. Oh, wow. You've got at least 70 grand. So there's no way in hell you're going to get $240,000 for that house. <clears throat> I was like, oh, okay. I think somebody got killed in that one. I'm not sure. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> I can, if I could throw three kids in it, ask me if I care. I know. Um, actually, this is only two bedroom, one bath. But it's not in a bad spot. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, I lived a couple of blocks north of Taylor for three years in a rental house when I first came down. So it's just a little house, but mm. not bad. Well, that's all they need. That's all they need. It's got the basics in it. For 70 grand. 72,000, yeah. <laughs> not too bad. Wouldn't touch that 12 one. grand a year, but it's 36 grand. I'm half of it. Mm -hmm. And I get recoup mm -hmm. the other 36 out of it, mm -hmm. even if I lose 36 out of it, mm -hmm. which I wouldn't, but that um, one didn't look too bad. Well, the 90... The 95 no, one? No, the 92, I think okay, it was. Okay, hold on. This right guy? there. Uh, part of town is not... Okay. No. Yeah, see, I don't know. No. I'm trying to find a map. Uh, there we go. Okay. Okay. So this is um Oh Hershey, okay. No, you don't want to be here. Um Hershey's no good. Hershey's well, bad out of it's, it's out. Hershey's okay. Hershey's this over here's the airport. Mm -hmm. Over this way. So this is like a back road that people use when Veterans Parkway is tore up. And this is Veterans Parkway right here. Um, this particular area of shootings. Yeah, it definitely. Don't want to. You don't want to do that. Taylor. There, Washington. There's East Taylor down here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I live on Vail. So not too far from me. It's just an older part of town. These houses over here were built in the 60s. These are usually built in the 40s, 30s. You know, they're older houses. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely a, not a bad part of town. It's not awful. But yeah, around Veterans, Par uh, Veterans Parkway, mm -hmm. stay away from. Okay. Anything off Veterans is, is turned into... Gang City. 
There's a bunch of apartments that line veterans. Bad, 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 bad. Anything west? Oh, forget it. See, I lived on Olive. I lived at 201 Solid. This is 601, so it's just a few blocks down. Not a bad place. It's just, like I said, two blocks north of Taylor. Um, and that's a pretty big house. That's a big house. I could throw a lot of parties in that. You sure could. <laughs> Looks like it needs some work, yeah, though. Oh, it. shit. It needs some yeah, work. Needs oh, some work. my God. <laughs> and they still want $110,000 for that shit? Oh, my God. Wow. wow. No, okay. Well, we'll move on from there. <laughs> Pain for the it, area. And then it just goes higher. a huge is it like a duplex yeah it looks like it doesn't it um, five bedroom two bath I would think it is single family it looks like it may have been a duplex yeah. it's an old house that's been converted I didn't say it looks like an older home it's not in bad shape though. doesn't look like it They're not showing you the pretty parts. <laughs> Where's this at? I think this is over by the airport, too. Oh, six points. Okay. Not bad. Not bad spot. So, this is Veterans Parkway, the very southern tip. So mm -hmm. this is 74 coming in and 55 where they meet here at the bottom part of yeah, Wilmington. The bottom. So this is not a bad spot. This is not a bad spot at all. There's some really, oh shut up. There's some really pricey homes. 449, wow. Yeah, over this way. Real pricey and big golf course over here. So this is not a bad spot. So let's see what this one is. Oh shit. Big house, four bedroom, two bath. But that's the kind you want for resale too. Yeah. That's garage and Yeah, it needs some work. hardwood floors and yeah, it's pretty roughed up uh, there. It don't it's bother me at all. Shit tore up. No, it's not being recorded. It is. No, it's blinking. I went in and paused it. So, yeah, this looks maybe later. The guts are there, but it looks like it's had some. Yeah, it definitely needs some renovation. Yeah, older cabinets. Yeah. Over cabinets and countertops. Yeah. Bathrooms that don't look, look that bad. bad. No. That, see, the carpet's been ripped out, hasn't it? No, it's like a tan colored carpet. Okay. It may be just nasty. No, no, that one doesn't look too bad. See, that's all I'm doing. Just going to put hardwood floors in this yeah, way. Yeah, tear everything out. It's else. easy to frickin' maintain and yeah. or put the luxury VCT in there. And yep. That's not a bad spot, but he's a lot further. He's quite a. But he's he can get on 20, the interstate. He can get on the interstate right there. Be at ISU in like 10 minutes. That's 10 minutes, thing. fine. Yeah. Because instead of going through town, he can jump right on the interstate. So he can get on the interstate right here. And ISU's right up here. Super easy. Look at a 265 for me. Because that's right by the school, isn't it? It is. Three bedrooms, three bathrooms. Let's do the 115. Let's see the 115. I know it's on a hill. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Hmm. You would pay 265. If I can. If it's that's in a, a decent nice neighborhood. House. That's a very nice house. And yes, spyglass is good. They have a 
have a bunch of college kids come in there? Yeah. Kill them. <laughs> I don't care. I'm this gonna, is very I'm going to make my money. <laughs> <laughs> this is very much a, um, yeah, this is a very it's nice. It's a residential home. Yeah, and families and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. be out there more than. Yeah, very nice home. You can, I can see him burning that place down in two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Let me throw some alcohol on it. You know, let's see if we can get it sparking up a little bit. That's a very nice little home. Good shape. Yeah, new ti- newer tile, yeah. newer cabinet. I thought you were trying to be a cheap, you know, landlord, you know, a slumlord. No, That's I'm not a nice. slumlord. You, you should know that by now. See the houses <laughs> around it. So, screened in back porch. That's yeah. very nice. Very nice. Great for the, great for the parties. Very nice for the parties. If you're going to look in that price range, <laughs> hell, we'll just keep scrolling here for a minute. <laughs> Let's <laughs> see what we can get into. I want to return on investment. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Um, That's not bad. 175 That looks pretty nice. That's East Jackson. It goes Olive, Jackson, Taylor. So I lived in Olive, Jackson's in between Taylor. And this is 605 East Jackson, so very close. Very nice. It's in a nice, it's in a nice area. Woodwork is beautiful. Look at the floors. They all down. You know, beautiful. Somebody flipped it. Yeah. Well, they've been there a long time and just took care of their house. Yeah. Nice covers. Those are new. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely updated yeah, everything. Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> First three years they won't after that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, just some thoughts. What uh, website did you go on? Mo- Movoto. Oh, Mo- Movoto. Yeah. Okay. I like them better than that. But I'll talk to Chet and I'll talk to Edwin. See what we can find. I kicked myself in the ears. Look at this. This is beautiful. Where's this at? Oh, Monet. Oh my God. Beautiful, Roger. I was going to buy this mm-hmm. on a short sale for four hundred and eighty five thousand. Six hours too late. Because I went and looked at a job with my kid. It cost me really nice. He goes, goes, What? I go, Me and Papa were going to move into this house. And he goes, Are you serious? I go, Yeah, I was going to buy. Put them in there. Lease out both of them. Because they own a two flat. Lease both of them out. But it's right down the street from the house. Like the rent, mm-hmm. they could live there, enjoy it. My mom, I showed my mom, and she's like, I love it. She loved the walk in shower. Oh, yeah, I was like, Yeah, me personally, this is what I love, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, like, looking out the back, yeah, that is plus all of the yeah. storage in the back. I was like. This would be perfect. I can just drive around the bed, open up the doors, and drive all my dead shit in. Mm-hmm. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Oh, my mom, she looked at me and she goes, what were you going to do? I go, $485,000. This guy bought it, and he's trying to sell it for six months. He did time. absolutely nothing to it. Give it some I was like, the hot water... He had an on-demand hot water heater, which was less than two years Why old. Why do I have to have that? Gas? Mm-hmm. Well, I, mean, I have to vent my hot water heater. Right? Because it's gas. Yeah. So why can't I use the vent that I have for my hot water heater? It's PVC. 
You can vent it. You just throw PVC up. Or you just have to buy it so that you use the gas fittings for the, a four inch or a six inch. You can buy them. I mean, I can, I can order an Avion with PVC or. Okay, we'll talk. I'll take pictures. They're telling me William McMasters, who is my hair guy, I asked him to do a quote on the on the van. He wouldn't even do it because he said I don't have it. Too much work. All it is. Yeah. So I still want to explore that. Ask Sean. We put one in for Sean. Sean Absolutely. I love them. I love them. Um, so let me let me take pictures. I'll bring them back and we'll. Most people are. Are you on well and septic? No, I'm on city water. City, city everything. Roger, eight o'clock. I got next site. They can they can wait a little bit, but I just see another. Hour. I'm gonna go in this drawer. Thank you for everyone's patience. We'll call this meeting back to order. Time now is, um, let's go with uh, 7.53. Thank you. So uh, we'll go back to our uh, or, uh, matter of business here, too. we got a few people, some attorneys in the audience as well, too. Trustees, uh, we'll try and call some cases up here, and then we'll go to our public forum. Um, first on the, I had a, Speak to a matter with um, JNL and CNC. Um, me, uh, Shane, gentlemen, you want to come up for a moment, please? So, um, our attorney, Vince Kankar, reminded me to, uh, just earlier that we needed to speak with you, gentlemen. Uh, you had an application in for a 6B renewal? Okay. So what I had on here was the owners of JNL CNC Quality Machine Incorporated. Um, you're located at 12633 South Springfield Avenue. That the um, this property would like to appear obviously today uh, to request the renewal of your Class B uh, tax incentive. Uh, your renewal for the tax bills for 2021 were uh, just reviewed by our attorney Vince Kankar and. Um, Vince felt um, he spoke to you about our um, renewal agreement and so forth on Tuesday. So can you introduce yourselves, please, who, who we're speaking with? Andrew Zolza, JNL CNC Quality Machine. Okay. Andrew, could you sign in for us, too, just to let you know you're here today? And then Zach. Uh, hey, Vince, I'm uh, the attorney. Okay. And Zach, what firm are you with again, too? Sarnoff and McCash. Sarnoff and McCash. Thank you very much. So as far as the I, – I don't have the full application with me. Uh, Zach or Andrew, if, if you want to speak to it and just uh, tell the board briefly what, what your plans are for um, JNL CNC machining. Yeah, JNL, I mean, uh, Andy can speak to us a little bit too, but uh, they, they've been in the village for years and they're looking to continue to stay and grow. Uh, right now there's 16 employees and they're looking to add more. Uh, and I'm sure Andy can tell you it is hard. They're CNC, CNC machine shop, and it is hard to find people who can do what they do. And so that's really been the struggle is finding uh, good people that can, you know, be make this. So uh, that's where he's at, and he's looking to try and improve the property a little bit. Um, and the uh, tax are going to continue to help him do that. Okay. Yeah. Basically, the other thing is, is you know, we're reinvesting. A new equipment every year to be updated to be competitive and stuff like that. Okay. And the older your equipment is, the less competitive we are. So we have to invest a lot of money in our business. Also. Thanks, Sean. If you could stand a little closer to that mic, will you? Thanks, because we actually record these. The, the camera's on us. But um, Andrew, um, how long you been in the village? I've been here since 2004. About oh, 2004. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. How's sales right now? Are you doing all right? 
sales would be better it's just the problem we have is trying to find experience employees you know what we do is we deal with real close tolerances i'm sure you're familiar with dawson machine kosher's brothers and other different machines oh yeah i've been to coasters before it's a so you know you know what they're doing and basically we do more or less the same thing but on a smaller scale you know they deal with thousands and pounds and and we do it on a hundred two hundred three hundred a thousand two thousand pound pieces you know so it's a little different scale but that's basically what we do also one of my best friends in the same industry he's over in bridgeview and same thing nuts and bolts and this and that and he's, he's he makes a lot of parts for polaris and all these kind of companies had too but i totally understand the, the nature and you're right it the finding machinists even setup men are is a difficult task to find and stuff yet we too have to have experienced machinists because we do a lot of onesies twosies and they have to be able to read a drawing set up and do their own programming okay based on our business you know okay we do not do value Okay. Now I'm f and I'm, I'm familiar with your shop here next to um, ABC. ABC is supply and so forth then too. Okay. Maywood also ABC. And Maywood Industries. Maywood Industries. Yes. Okay. Uh, trustees, anybody have any questions for Andrew from CNC Machine? J and L. Okay. Well, gentlemen, thank you for coming in there. Introduce yourselves and and um, what we'll do is and tonight's just a committee meeting, but certainly we'll put this on our agenda. Uh, next week, and we have a board meeting. We'll ask the board to approve your request for what you'd like to do and stuff like too. Okay. So fortunately, we've been able to, um, at this time, you know, we're, uh, even with the uh, property taxes generated from your your building have been sufficient, and our attorney feels that we're in, you're in a good position to renew this right now. Then too. So. Thank you very uh, much. You too, Zach. Nice meeting you as well too. We okay. You. Have a nice evening. You too all. Thanks, folks. Next. Um, Trustee uh, Juarez Mendoza is um, under planning and zoning licenses. Uh, we have got a party here for your number one, if you want to call them up, please. Um, I have a discussion of planning and zoning case 20, I'm sorry, number 2022-12-S-1100 for an I-1 industrial to an I-1 industrial special use for truck trailer parking vehicle repair, hard storage, and office for property located at 4637 West 120th Street, Elsip, Illinois, 60803. The Planning and Zoning Commission held a hearing on December 14, 2022, and voted 5-0 in favor of. Thank you. Oh, thanks, gentlemen, for coming up. So I, I'm, a little, I'm familiar with the property anyway. Um, so what you want to do, your business right now, and if you can introduce yourselves, go ahead. Uh, my name is Nick Fatikas, F-T-I-K-A-S. I'm the attorney uh, representing Luke on the special use application. Okay. And Luke? Luke Trykov, owner of uh, LTC Logistics. So, Luke, I've seen your business. You're, you're just west of, like, Elite Transmission, right? Is that where you're at on 120th Street? Is that you? No, no. Uh, I'm purchasing this property now. I'm under contract. Okay. So, uh, currently, my business is uh, spread all over. So I got the, uh, I'm parking my trucks in Le Monde. I got my office in Burridge, and I'm using repair shop here in Blue Isle. Okay. So this is gonna uh, make my operation to be everything in one place. Okay. So just to give us a quick overview, are you buying that that property that ends at in, in from? Um no, not the end. Uh, so basically, uh, it's a uh, 12,000 square foot building. Yeah. And next to it, there is like a vacant lot. Uh, I think uh, before uh, there was a building there. Right, just from the, the bus down. company? This is west of Elite Transmission and uh, Leo Brothers. Yeah. And empty lot that uh, the uh, building was taken down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's some trucks sitting out there right now. That's what this is. I see. I had the wrong property. Okay. I was thinking the one next to Elite with part of um, Enterprise rent a car. All right, okay. And we did bring a, a survey and just a site plan. Do you want me to? Sure. Can, I, can we see it, please? Thanks. Just don't worry yourself. All right. So, Luke, I, I, I'm familiar with this now then, too. So, yeah, there used to be a building stand. The building's gone. There's about 14 trucks sitting out there right now. That's your property. Uh, All right, that's one you want to buy anyway. Gotcha. So, and just to, 
in, as part of our discussion with um, the building and zoning group, we are not operating there currently. The plan is to purchase the property, do some interior alterations to the building, okay. and then basically reorganize the parking layout. Um, we did, and I want to make sure it's part of the record, um, the Building and Zoning commit Committee has recommended um, organizing our parking spaces vertically mm -hmm. as opposed to horizontally. We had initially come in um, with a different layout, and I want to make sure that um, the plan that you're looking at now is what we agreed was a more efficient layout. Um, so that's the plan that we were able to get our, our recommendation of approval. Okay. Make sure it's with the board. Can I have two yeah. additional copies if, if you call oh. Yeah, if you want to share it with both sides here. Thank you. And what, Luke, what's the intent of the trucks? Are those just being staged for repairs, or what are you doing uh, with the semis? Basically, you know, with the current shortage of drivers, some trucks are uh, staying without drivers for a month, so that's why I need the parking lot. I like my office to be there. Currently, I think uh, uh, that building is a flex building, and there is three tenants inside, so I like to make it like one-story building. Okay. Currently, there is like 3,000 square foot, I think, of office space. I like to make it more, you know, to have more office space, less uh, uh, storage and for repair place. And that's it. Look, no running trucks out there, though, right? They're not going to be sitting out there idling or anything like that. I think because we every so often there's another restaurant in town. You got one right in the corner there with the Golden Barrier too. We can't have any idling trucks. That diesel fumes, you know, they they blow right across into those places then too. So the fuel cost a lot. So. That too, you know. <laughs> Um, but you did receive a unanimous decision uh, for recommendation from the plan commission, which is great to hear. Um, trustees, any questions for Luke? No. no? Um, I, you know, that's fine. I like the layout, Luke. You know, like you said, with, with parking everything perpendicular to the street, it's probably the best use, and it's a good size lot. That's 230 by 334. That's a good size lot. Yeah, over. It's over an acre, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So, um, Roger, any, any Roger Early's our building commissioner. Roger, any issues? Anything you think we need to talk about? Sounds good. Okay. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. It doesn't look like we have any questions. And, again, I appreciate, um, Scott, the, the layouts that you gave you, too. It really explains a lot to the board. Uh, as I mentioned the last party, we'll put this on the agenda for next week, asking for approval um, on your uh, special use permit. Okay? All right. Thanks much, guys. Um, I'll wait a few minutes on the next site. Raj, if you can let them in, uh, it's the 8 o'clock meeting. We'll get them in a few minutes. We'll get some more people out of the way that are here and stuff then, too. Um, so I'll put my report off here from it. We'll go to our clerk's report, Clerk Harding. Thank you, Mayor. Of the presentation of the January 9th, 2023 board meeting minutes, presentation of the December 2022 FOIA report, and presentation of the December 2022 IDOT motor fuel tax allotment in the amount of $74,403.68. And that is all I had, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, we don't need an attorney tonight. We already spoke with him. Uh, the engineer did not have a report this evening. We'll go to a public forum. Did anyone in the audience wish to address the board this evening? Um, la ladies, did you want to talk to the board tonight? No? Okay. Sir? You know, oh, Mr. Mr. Nelson? You know what, sir? Um, yeah, come on. Come on up. We'll, we'll talk about this right now. This way we won't hold you up either. This um, trustee Juarez Mendoza. Or, no, I'm sorry. This is uh, trustee Prada. Uh, this would be under your report, sir, for the... Um, also Crossings uh, subdivision? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, uh, I have a, a presentation um, of the Elsop Crossings Homeowners Association is requesting the village to rename their private street, currently known as Laramie Avenue, 
but is now requesting their street to be known as Laramie Court. Um, we have Mr. Irving. This is Mr. Irving Nelson. Nelson. You know, Mr. Nelson, I, after you and I, we met last Monday with your homeowner association board. And I appreciate what, what you folks are doing. We'll do whatever you folks want to do. I know you, you put your application in. And just so everybody understands uh, the nature of Mr. Nelson, uh, what he was bringing in front of us is when you travel westbound from Cicero Avenue west on 115th, Mather Street has a sign that says, uh, with an arrow that says, go back to Laramie. Don't know why they did it, but back in the day, I would have called the whole thing Mather and just walked away. But there's... Laramie Street is in the back of Mather. You have to travel Mather to get there. Mr. Nelson's subdivision, uh, also crossings, is at 115th and Laramie. And um, they're basically 114th and Laramie. They call it Laramie Avenue, and that was designated like that in the early 2000s when they built all these townhomes for 55 and older folks to live there. But they've had some confusion with mail, deliveries, and whatnot that if people are coming westbound, let's say your favorite, I don't even use a delivery company's name, could be UPS even, but some of their deliveries, a few things, are going to Mather Street when they should go to Laramie Street. So they felt by changing the designation might eliminate any confusion, especially with 911 services yet too, uh, that they can do that. But you know what, Irving, after you guys were here the other day, I thought about this a little more, and we're going to do whatever you folks want to try and help you rectify this thing. But after I thought about it really, too, and again, I don't want to change your mind, but just my idea, I wonder if court, changing it from avenue to court is going to do enough to shake that off. Or do you think, you, know, you guys can do whatever you want, but like your subdivision is called also crossings. What if we call it like crossings court? Would that help you instead? Because I think that's more of a designation. What do you think? I agree. Yeah. After talking to Mr. Pernella, he said that it's still, if we keep it at, Laramie Court, it's still going to be an issue. Yeah. And it's just, it's far more than what you just stated. I, we were just looking at even coming across 111th, right there, you know, where Oak Lawn and, you know, where it, mm -hmm. it splits uh -huh. with Jordan on one side, uh, Laramie on the other. Yeah. But when people make that turn to go on Laramie, they don't realize that once many of them, when they get there, and then they go over to Mass mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. down there. And they have exact addresses that we do. Mm -hmm. So either way you coming and going, you know, people uh they think when they hit Mather that they're at our address. Mm -hmm. And it's always been going on. So, you know, and even when I moved in, uh I saw it was a problem then. Mm -hmm. I talked to the then building commissioner or whatever and I say that this is you know, it's very confusing. Mm -hmm. The navigation systems and everything, uh, even to this day, have issues with that because it should have never been an avenue. That's a private street. Mm -hmm. Just like, uh, what are the, Mulberry? They put those subdivisions in at, uh, was it, Mulberry Drive. And you have McDaniels, you have McDaniel Street, and when they put the subdivision mm -hmm. in, it's McDaniels Court. Mm -hmm. So it, it separates. But for some reason, we ended up with Laramie Avenue, and we're not part of Laramie Avenue. Mm -hmm. And even when you put it into uh, your computers and things, you know, they, it won't get it. A lot of them still don't recognize it as an avenue mm -hmm. because they, they have that intelligence to realize that a dead-end street cannot be an avenue, mm -hmm. at least not in Cook County. Right. So... so uh, Irving, are you okay then if we go if we go crossings court? Yeah. Want to do that? Right. After talking, I think yeah that it's probably better. You know, we 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 hate to lose it, but it is the best. Yeah. In the long I, run. I I think that strong designation. I think they'll do you a world of good. I don't want to make it too long where it doesn't feel like on an application or something like that. You, you don't have right. too many letters in there. Um, Roger, you're building commissioner. What do you think about that? A crossings court for, for these folks? Police chief, what do you think, Jay? <laughs> uh, I think you're going to have issues for a while. Yeah. What, what would be your recommendation, chief? What do you think? 
Well, you finally sold me on Laramie Court. I just got over that. Yeah, well, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't know if that's going to be enough that anybody's looking for a little CT on the sign that that would make a difference and stuff. That's all, you know. We tried that. It was your idea a couple years ago we did that. But, you know, what do you think? Uh, we'll get through it. I mean, I just have to make sure that the 911 system is programmed the right way. Sure. Which entails... Other agencies, another agency's coordinator. I know, and I, I did tell Mr. Nelson too. We're going to take responsibility. We'll notify all the utility companies, 911, everybody else, we'll, and post office, and all that. And we'll let everybody know. Because you have to. Take, and that was the only problem with the Laramie Court. We were satisfied with it, but it still wasn't. Because even 911, uh, they still didn't recognize Court as being an official street here. I checked it. And then the post office was never notified. See, they have to be notified of any street change. So it wasn't an official change. So, and then, you know, we just decided that we, we got to get this situation where we have a legitimate street. So that's, you know, and that's the whole reason I'm, you know, brought everything up. So. All right. So, Mr. Nelson, what I'll do then is I'll have Public Works get me up some brand new signage. And before we change anything out and all that kind of stuff, I'm going to send notice to you and, and all the all the homeowners in there, advise them, you know, at least a month in advance that we're going to be changing this out and so forth. And I'll confirm with you before we do anything like that that I let everybody know that, that about the change. Okay. okay. And I'll give you a list of who I contacted so you folks know um, as far as receipt, who did what. Okay. okay? And I want to help you guys as much as we can. But I didn't want to take away a designation. But after we walked away from our meeting last Monday, I'm like, man, I don't think we did enough here. You know, let's let's try something better. Yeah, it is true. After talking to him and I, and I yeah, thought about uh, it. Yeah, Trustee Pratt and, and I, I talked, talked to yeah. the board, too. And they, you know, even though, you know, it's like anything. You get used to Laramie. They still would have liked the court, but it is the best. Yeah. And like I say, overall, we're looking for the best so that we can – you know, just have a legitimate street where people know that they come into our address and not all the confusion. Yep. So. It is where you get a great identity there then, too. You know, so. Right. So. All right. I, I'll, um, I'll be checking with you as soon as I get more of this done then, too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so much, Commissioner Nelson. All right. Raj, did we, um, you know what? I think they were just blinking me here. They were trying to get in. Want me to, do you want me to sign into it? Yeah. Here, I'll get it. <coughs> It's always so cold in here. Hmm? It's always so cold in here for me. <laughs> Okay. 
Well, we're waiting for the next site. We'll go on with our meeting. Uh, first, we'll go with finance and IT. Trustee McLaurin. Thanks, Mayor. I will have a list of payroll and accounts payable for approval next week. And then also, um, Joyce has provided us with the OPEB trust statements for November and December. So I apologize for saying that. Um, so we have the statements for November and just a partial on the December. Um, State Street is the fiduciary for Old National and they're showing the trades, the investments that we have right now. And I'm sure you'll be happy to know that we made $700,000 in the last month, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the positive part. Um, we are now fully invested this month. As of the end of November, we weren't. They invested in three tranches of approximately $7 million. So not to put it all in at one time, because the market at the time was pretty, acting pretty crazy. So they have put it out in three tranches. They are pulling back quite severely on some of the investments, um, mainly to do with real estate. So I have already put out a document on that where they have restricted what they're going to be investing in and eliminating REITs. So uh, we're looking pretty good. So. I'm stuck at the, at the return on investments. Huh? It was great. Well, yeah, that's one, one month. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. it will change. <laughs> but, yeah, that, that was the good news. Right. That's all I have. Thank you very much, Joyce. So Roger, I, I got a message news. back. It says um, <laughs> on the uh, Zoom call, it says it says it's waiting for hosts to start I meeting. So. We'll keep going here. Next, um, thank you, thank you, Joyce. Um, the fire committee report, Trustee Murphy. No report tonight, Mayor. All right. Next, we have police and traffic safety committee. That'll be me. Um, first on the agenda, I have a presentation of the police department December 2022 monthly activity report. Uh, second, it's not on the agenda. But I have a request to discuss an ordinance amending Chapter 16 um, about lateral hire police officers. Um, Chief Miller, would you like to elaborate a little bit about that? Uh, sure. It's a one-page read. I, I left you guys a paper copy. I'll send out a digital copy in the morning. Um, but essentially, it's going to allow us to hire officers that are already certified um, in the state. So rather than having to go through a whole testing process and paying a fee, people that are officers already don't want to have to go through that all over again. Um, so this would be, allow us to interview the candidates, still do psychological, still do polygraphs, still do a very thorough background. We don't want to inherit somebody else's issues. Um, but it would alleviate us from having to send them through an academy, having to wait for an academy to start. Um, so we'd be able to get them on the road a lot faster than we would a new hire. Um, there's been a lot of places doing this already for probably the last year. Um, so there's been a lot of people already been picked over, but it's another tool in our tool belt to try and get some more officers in here quicker than going through the original process. Um, given the fact that we amended um, some provisions in the contract recently, I think we have a good opportunity to hire some good officers from other towns that may not be as fortunate as we are with, with the pay and adjustments that we made there. So, I, I spoke with the chief right before the meeting started. And um, chief, I just read the whole thing just now, and it, it looks like you covered this pretty well. Police and fire commissioner are still involved in this, and basically the front person on this is going to be yourself or your designee. Um, to um, make a recommendation for whoever it is that might be interested in being a la lateral transfer and stuff onto. 
It's essentially the same process we have in place now. Uh, we get the list of candidates, you know, one to one to ten, one to a hundred, whatever, and we start the background. We do, we walk them through the process of all the testing as far as setting up the polys, the psychs, the medicals, and once we kind of get to a point where we can recommend or not recommend the person be hired, then the commission makes that decision. Okay. No age restriction either, Chief, or anything like that, or. I think uh, I didn't see one that Mike put in here. Um, it's typically 30. It's typically 35. Um, I'll have to double check that. But. Okay. Okay. Um, trustees, any question for the chief? No, I like it. No. All right, thanks, Jay. Um, then yeah, we'll, let's go over this and um, again, we'll put it up for a vote then too to, to get it approved then too. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you know what, Raj? Here, it just it takes just a minute. We can always schedule another one here real quick. And I, just, I can text them right here and they're both, they're both sending me notes. For some reason, they're having a hard time signing it. While we're killing time, uh, I don't know if you guys have watched the news uh, with Hondas and Kias being stolen. So we were able to contact, Lieutenant Kakowski contacted Hondai, and they donated. Um, 65, we'll call them steering wheel locks, um, to the department to hand out to Hyundai owners. Um, so we started that program today. We started it with Heritage, uh, both Heritages, and we had a probably probably at least a dozen people come in today to pick them up. Uh, we did contact Kia late last week, and they agreed to send some out as well. Um, so they were going to send out, I think it was like 60 of them. So um, just, you know, it's a feel-good story, I guess, but they're paying it for them, so they want them to go to their owners, and we ask for registration and proof of ownership and that they're a village resident, so. Very good. So if they're interested, could they, where do they inquire? I know you, you mentioned that you're, that you're starting off with mm -hmm. Heritage, but if another resident is interested, is there a first-come, first um, or We're going to put it on Facebook. We have a flyer made up, um, so it'll... I'll send that as well to you guys in the morning. Um, yeah, it's just as long as you're a village resident, you own a Hyundai right now. Next week it'll be Kia, unless they come in early. Um, you have a valid village village sticker. And just like some sort of proof that you're a resident, like a driver's license or insurance card or something like that. Okay. We did have special requests for red ones and it's <laughs> black. One color. I don't <laughs> 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 As long as your car is still there, yeah, with yeah. it on. <laughs> Make sure you use it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and while we're waiting on them, I would like to bring up the budget process. Um, I was talking to Trustee Peretta and Trustee Navasparza before the meeting, and we are starting the budget meetings with the department heads. And I would like to invite the chairs of the committees to be at those uh, department head meetings when we meet with them. We have a lot of good discussion. And I will reschedule meetings to make it convenient for you to be able to be at those meetings. So if you're interested, please let me know. And I'll be more than happy to do that, get you the schedules if you're interested in, in being in your department's or in yeah, in your department's budget initial budget meetings. This is where we do a lot of nuts and bolts discussion about, you know, why are you ordering that and what's the new projects and there's just a lot of good discussion that goes on in there. And that, that way you're kind of prepared when we get to the budget meetings with the board of what's going to come down, you know, what we're going to be presenting. So just if you're interested. Yeah, I'd be interested. Thank you, Joyce. <coughs> Have you all seen the police floor? No. Oh. no. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, no. Mm -hmm. It is incredible. It is great. It's it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. It makes the place look so professional. Yeah, it's so clean. It's all poured now. It looks really nice. 
stop by in the in the lobby when you're headed out and take a look at it. I think it's it's very nice. Okay. <laughs> we need a 15 year old over there. I know, I was just that thinking that. <laughs> has extra processes where people are using Google Meets now. Oh, yeah. Do you have a Google email? Yep. Yeah, we've used them with the kids' schools school before. School. Look, could have like a Google Workspace, right? Mm -hmm. You'd have yep. to set up the Skype meet. As long as all I had to click was... They'll be on. We'll have next site in just a minute. Roger, just keep my eye on. They'll, they'll blink it right back up. Uh, let's finish up our reports then, too. Um, Next, we have Paulo Quirk and Bolon, Trustee Juarez Mendoza. I have a presentation of the Public Works Department December 2022 monthly activity report. That's on there. All right, thank you. Sewer and Water Report, Trustee Navas Barza. I have no report this evening, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to uh, Building and Health, Trustee Preda, number two, that was still on there. Thank you, Mayor. I have a presentation of the Health Department December 2022 monthly activity report. Um, in that report, there were 19 complaints and 15 citations, and that's all I have, Mayor. All right, thank you. Human Resource and Insurance, Trustee Murphy. No report tonight, Mayor. Okay. Special Committee Reports, Economic Development, Trustee Nava Sparza. I have no report this evening. Okay. Then we'll go to Village Properties, Trustee McLaughlin. No report this evening, Mayor. Okay. I think that's nice that the police department was able to secure those clubs. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Next, ordinance and legislation, Trustee Peretta. No report at this time, Mayor. Okay. Uh, planning and zoning and licenses, uh, Trustee Juarez Mendoza. We still have number two. I have a presentation of a list of licenses dated in review and dated January 6th. 2023 through January 13th, 2023. That's on there. Thank you. I'd also like to note, uh, let all the trustees know that um, my assistant, Becky Smith, has scheduled mandatory training for the plan commission. That's going to take place on um, Wednesday, February 1st, at, from 7 until 9.30 p.m. This is in place of one of their regular meetings. Uh, for all the plan commission members. We're going to have a trainer and a land use attorney here um, to uh, obviously better educate or in, uh, talk about all the rules with um, plan commission. So, But I'm, I'm also asking the board members, and it's open to anybody that would like to participate, but I'm asking the board members, members please, to participate as well, too, if you're, uh, when you come in. Uh, I think this is going to be some really good information. They're also trying to get a head count. So if you think you're able to attend that meeting, please call Becky Smith and let her know so she can tell the attorneys because they've got materials that they're going to bring out. But we're going to have uh, training on Wednesday, February 1st, from 7 until 9.30 p.m. here in the boardroom for um, anybody interested in learning more about plan commission, and especially the commission itself. We've got some new people on there, but I think everybody needs a brush up on what today's rules are for a plan commission, so we're, we're, we're having that training taken care of. Uh, Roger? That's amazing. Every time we, you know, for the most part, it works all the time, uh, too, but that's the electronic world we live in. We sent them a new invite, too. It says invalid meeting ID. Can you double check that number, please? Just make sure I have the right number. Is it a seven one three four five three? Six uh three six three 
Let me try. Okay. Three six three one oh four forty two twenty two. Uh, let's see if this works. Okay, so I just got back, Raj. It says it says waiting for the host to allow us in. What's the PS code you have there, Raj? Six capital N, capital J, nine, lowercase y, uppercase R. All right, we're going to try this one last time. They're saying that they can send us a Teams meeting, and I can certainly log into that, so it's not a big deal. I want to. I want to wrap this up. Let, let me tell them yes, and let's see if that'll work. I. I know from my office, I never have problems on here. So.
just look at my nephew. Um, he came from Texas. Oh, yeah? And uh, he's supposed to be coming to me since last year, but you know, he put it off. And I told him, you know, he'll come now to so came over Christmas. And um, I think, not that I didn't want him to come, but I just, it's another teenager in the house, you know, it's <laughs> having difficulties right now, right? So, um, I just got over feeling guilty not being able to cook for my own kids or, you know, be like, I should be. <coughs> so it's been a blessing in his life because he's just been, and no one's asked him to do anything. He's been cooking, he's been cleaning. He's been, I'll go for you, like, when you have to go to the store, I'll go for you. You know, like, he's just been, like, 110%. And I looked at my boys, I'm like, I can't stand either one of you. <laughs> I really can't. You know, and I see you guys take for granted, you know, because you're so spoiled, you took it for granted, you know, everything that I do for you guys, you know, and it's exhausting. I can't, uh, my bedroom's in the basement, so I have to go upstairs to the bathroom and the uh, kitchen. So I moved myself upstairs. I moved us upstairs and moved one of the boys downstairs for the time being. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just sloppy. So getting them out of coming from downstairs is now impossible. You know, they never want to come up from down there. They just want to stay down there and hang out. Mm -hmm. But it's been like, I really thought, I, I, not that it was going to be a burden, but I thought it was going to be like, too much to handle. But it's been the total opposite. Yep. My brother is going to take my kids. He said, Come on. <laughs> so yes, Saturday and Sunday, both days, he woke me up and served me breakfast in bed. <laughs> I know. Okay. I was like, You know, you don't have to do this. He's like, I know, but I'm just so grateful. and. You know, I get up, I still get up, you know, it takes me longer though, but like to cook breakfast, and you know, I still do it. The boys will come up and help every now and again, but not like him. But it's time to get up now, it's already done, the kitchen's cleaned up, like, who, who, who did you come from? It's at the top, I think, up next to the A, the top bar. I'll tell you, my brother, the my brother's like, my kid? That little like, camera thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right at the end of the right. website oh. address. I know you're like under the screen to the right. So up. Oh. Keep going right. right there, Raj. Uh, it's not at all. Continue a line. There must be some firewall. There we go. Hit the camera too, Reg. On your left. There you go. You hitting that, Reg? Hi, Chuck. Give us one second, please. I had some technical difficulty here. <laughs> All right, no problem. So, Chuck, are you seeing us okay? I'm not seeing you, but I'm, uh, I've got a big circle with a J in the middle of it, so I'm not seeing either you or Pat. Okay, give me one second. They're fixing it here. You know what? It's not real important. Uh, you know, as long as we can talk to each other is the important part. And uh, Roger, you can turn up the volume a little bit, please. There you go. Chuck, can you hear us okay? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Pat, are you on there too? Pat, you still with us? No. Okay. Looks like she dropped off. She's trying to fix her technique. All right. All right, no worries. Chuck, thanks for your patience. Uh, you know, we, we had a meeting that ran a little bit long, and then I don't know why the, the uh, Zoom invite didn't work, but thank you uh, for being with us tonight. So, uh, Chuck, this is Chuck Branch with NextSite. And I asked Chuck to get on with us real quick this evening. Um, we, the board had some question, and Chuck, you saw the, the uh, email I put out to everybody. 
And what I put on here was just that um, I asked the board to take a look at the next site correspondences. And um, I noted, uh, after I notified next site of our decision, the board, we didn't feel like we were getting enough reports from next site. You and I, Chuck, went back and forth with that. We uh, basically aired out like what, what the reports were. After I notified you um, in late October about that, November 11th, the report does show some activities on who you met with, retailers to be interested, and um, certainly some regular updates and so forth is what we are looking for. Now next site is familiar with the village, uh, including its demographics, and seems to have good feelers out there. And um, certainly we want to honor our agreement with you, Chuck. Uh, it was a five to one vote to uh, approve the use of next site to promote the village of Alsip. What can you tell us where do we stand right now? Like what's going on with uh, next site and the village of Alsip? Yeah. Um, so let me give you a real quick rundown. Um, Raj, turn it up a little bit. Thank you.
Um, it's a little bit expensive, uh, the site is, to make the economics work with current cap rates. Um, but we're going to see if we can't come up with a second concept and let them do a two tenant. Um, so or two tenants, but they'll both be single tenant uh, concepts unless we end up doing uh, one of the sandwich concepts with um, something like a T-Mobile or something. Um, Sean McCourt, CBRE, who was um, and continues to list the U.S. Bank building, uh, we provided him all of the analytics and research also. Last update we got from him is he's getting very close to having that site back under contract. Once it's under contract, he said he would share more information with us. Um, Amy Cohen with the That's spoken equity. for, right? Pardon me? Oh, that's a good mic. I was going to say, I was, I was kind of trying to get our building commissioner's attention, Chuck. I think the U.S. Bank property, Roger, that's spoken for again, right? For Chuck, just so you know, they deal with Popeyes. Popeyes changed their mind at, uh, at the... At the U.S. Bank. Yeah, but uh, it it might. I don't want to say what kind of businesses, but we've got an interested party right now. But it's not a commercial retail retailer of any type. They started construction already. It's gone then, Chuck. That's off, right? Okay. All right. You know, to try to speak right here. But here's some additional developers that we've met with. We've sent them not only the analytics, but our void list. And in certain cases, we know which tenants they uh, tend to do projects with. And so we're focused on that. Uh, but Pierpoint Ventures out of Peoria, Red Seeker Partners out of Chicago, WMG out of Effingham, Mid America out of Chicago, the Otis Companies out of Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, GPK Acquisitions, great guy Jeff Kurth out of Chicago, STNL out of Ohio, Hamilton Partners out of Chicago, Jim Cap out of North Carolina, Wilson Development Group out of Missouri, Black Tide Development out of Nashville, the State Burden Group out of St. Louis, Matthew Real Estate uh, Investments out of Chicago, and the Overland Group out of Houston, Texas. Um, so that's right now the list of developers that we have put ideas as far as potential tenants, provided them the analytics, and continuing to support um, them looking at the different sites. I think we've got maybe, I know we've got at least a dozen, and maybe as many as 15 sites that we put together throughout also to send to these different developers. Um, you saw the list of retailers from the Chicago conference that are all looking for locations in the greater metro Chicago area. Um, there's a few of those that um, are low hanging fruit in our opinion um, as far as the market. So the other thing that we do that helps us with the developers, the tenant reps, and the concepts is that we do a peer analysis layered with the void analysis. What that means is we've identified markets throughout the upper Midwest that have a very similar demographic profile to also. And then we have our void list and we can show the propensity for certain concepts to locate in markets that mirror also. And so it's a, it helps sort of grease the skids when we're talking to some of these concepts. Um, we will send you um, actually, we'll upload it to Basecamp a list of all the properties that we've identified and that we're working. And if there are other properties that you have available or you know that are off market but could be um, developed for commercial space, all you need to do is send those to us or upload them to Basecamp and we'll add them to our efforts. Um, that's sort of where we are right now. Yeah, our, our job is to market also. But also been in front, of, in front of as many developers and as many concepts that have shown that propensity to locate in similar markets, beat them the analytics, and then continue to answer new questions, provide them additional analysis. Sometimes they'll come back and ask us to run a potential cannibalization <coughs> based on an existing location in a continuous community. Um, and then ultimately the goal is, is that once a developer 
decides on the site and is interested in the market, getting them connected to the mayor so that that conversation can take place. That's great. I, I want um, Pat, thanks for your patience. This is Pat Eves on the right. And uh, Pat is a representative with NICOR Gas Company, and NICOR is um, is endorsed um, next site to all, many communities here in Illinois. So, Pat, thanks for coming with uh, being with us this evening, and I apologize for the uh, delays, technical delays we had to start. Can you hear us, okay, Pat? Okay. Okay. Uh, Chuck, really, I appreciate the report you gave us this evening, and despite. Um, the way I may have come off on emails and whatnot, that's exactly what you just did was what all I was looking for. Yeah, I can't think of it too. So, um, uh, trustees, did you have any questions for Chuck? I do. Tr uh, Chuck, this is Chris Murphy, Trustee Murphy. I Could you share with us any of the uh, stumbling blocks that you are finding that people are have as to why they would not uh, set up shop here in, in Elsa? Thank you. Yeah, my Anybody else? You know, Chuck, we actually, um, a couple of years ago, we actually did have an opportunity. I, I, I think I told Charles this, but uh, we did have an opportunity to get a Starbucks. But uh, we came down, we actually even went to an RFP and um, on a property that we owned. And the poor majority decided to go with a sit-down family restaurant instead. Uh, but we, we we had the opportunity to have a Starbucks here, but we decided we the board majority opted for a sit-down family restaurant here too. It's it's under construction right now. It should be actually he was just in here uh, about a week or so ago. We're hoping that's going to be open by April 1st. What's the name of that restaurant? Um, Firewater Barbecue and Brew. It's a um, it's to be about his fifth or sixth restaurant, something like that. But you can't be the barbecue restaurant. No, this guy he's got double. Um, Double uh, smokers and so forth. He, and he, he promotes um, uh, beef brisket every day and uh, craft beer and wine. He's got his own microbrewery out in West Mons and so forth there too. So. Nice. Look forward to coming up and having some barbecue and a beer. Yeah, Chuck, you got are you you're in Alabama too? I am. Okay. Born in New Orleans, moved to Birmingham when I was three, and been here ever since. Very good. Well, Chuck, thank you. And, Pat, thanks for being with us this evening. I'm sorry this meeting ran so late, uh, but I will certainly, Chuck, I'll be back in contact with you uh, tomorrow. That's great. Everybody, uh, have a great evening. If you have additional questions, we'll get them through the mayor. Sounds great. Thanks much, Chuck. Have a good evening. You also. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll finish up the rest of our meeting board. Um, Number seven was, did anyone have any presentations, petitions, or communications? None. How about any unfinished business? Any new business? Mayor? Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Did uh, uh, letter D, did we do uh, number two? 
Did we comp did Trustee uh, uh, Juarez uh, Mendoza? Yeah. yeah. You yeah, did number did two? That. Yeah, that's oh, okay. what I was talking about the training after that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, then can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. We'll adjourn this meeting at 8.58 p.m. And I appreciate everybody's patience this evening. Have a great evening.